Hi, I'm Jonah, and I'll be discussing red black trees today. Um, red black trees are a really powerful data structure, um, but sadly, there's not very many JavaScript implementations available. Um, so I wrote my own that hopefully will make them more accessible to aspiring web developers. So before discussing red black trees, I think it's important to discuss in general uh, why trees are important and their alternatives. Um, we commonly store things in arrays or linked lists. And when retrieving information from an array or linked list, it's an O of N operation because we have to iterate through each item in that array or linked list. And as we learned earlier, one alternative is the binary search tree. Um, and this is longer set up because we have to place each item in a specific order. Um, but it results in a shorter search. And it's, in, it's important to understand the reason that this search is shorter, which is that all of the nodes that are in the branch that isn't gone through um, are ruled out, and we don't have to iterate through that entire branch. Um, so we're trying to get um, O of log n search time. Um, but the downside of this that we didn't really look that much into is that um, <laughs> The order of insertion really matters. So this actually isn't O of n yet. Um, this is an insertion of 2, 4, 3, 1 in order. And it would be something resembling O of log n time. But if we insert in a different order, 4, 3, 2, 1, we, we have the tree below, um, which actually resembles the linked list. As you can see um, on one branch of the tree, we're not really ruling out any nodes. Um, so it doesn't really have any benefit. And this brings us to the solution. Um, which is trees that balance themselves. And there's actually several different alternatives um, for red-black trees. Um, and these trade off different levels of complexity and frequency of balancing um, with how balanced the tree ends up being. Um, so at one extreme, there's um, every single time you insert a new node, you would completely redo the tree from scratch to ensure perfect balance. Um, that's a very expensive operation. So we're going to be looking at red-black trees. Um, so when we're looking at a red-black tree, there are several rules. Um, first of which, I think it's important to note that it actually has the same rules as a binary tree, um, plus some additional ones. So smaller numbers still go to the left, larger numbers go to the right. Um, each node, in addition, has a color property, which is red or black. And hopefully, as I go through this, it will become clear why we have that. Um, we always color the root node, so the node at the top, to be black. And all leaves are null black nodes. Um, red nodes cannot have red children, so we can't have two red nodes in a row. And at each node or subtree, all paths have the same number of black trees, uh, sorry, of black nodes down to the bottom. And it's really the last two rules that are important and important takeaways. So when we combine those rules, what we're doing is we're setting an upper bound on how imbalanced the tree can be. So this is actually the most imbalanced a red black tree could possibly be if one branch has all black nodes, and the other branch, which has to have the same number of black nodes, goes black, red, black, red. So in a red-black tree, the longest branch of the tree can't be more than twice as long as the shortest branch of the tree. Um, so this helps a lot with search time. So now I'm going to get a little bit into my implementation. It's a bit technical. Um, maybe you can review the slides after if need be. Um, but the first step is actually very similar to insertion in a normal binary search tree. Um, so basically, all this code is doing um, we've all implemented a binary search tree like this. It's just recursing down the tree until we hit a null node, inserting a node. Um, in this case, however, the new node that we create is always red, as you see on the new node line. And it has two null black children. Um, once we've inserted that node, what we're doing is we have to actually check to make sure that this is a valid red black tree so that there are no two red nodes in a row. So what we do is we recurse back up the tree until we see a black node. And that's where we assess whether the tree at that point is valid. Um, this is where it gets slightly more complex. So the various imbalance cases. So the first imbalance case involves having two consecutive red nodes and a red uncle node. Um, so as you can see in the before section, we have two red nodes in a row. We would have inserted the redmost node here. So this is not valid. We say it has a red uncle node um, because its parent node, sibling, <laughs> is also red. Um, and what we do in this case is fairly simple. We recolor the parent node of the node we just inserted, the uncle node, and the grandparent node. So the three nodes that are in the box just become different colors. And as you can see, there's no longer two red nodes in a row. And there's the same number of black nodes down each branch. Um, the second case, um, we again have two, black, two red nodes in a row. Um, but this time, the uncle is black. And hopefully, this helps demonstrate why we insert black null nodes. 
um, so that we can assess the color of the uncle. Um, in this case, what we do is a rotation. So I'm going to walk through it, I guess, line of code by line of code, because it's a bit complicated. So the first step is that we're reassigning the pointer of the parent node of the node that we just inserted. So instead of, sorry, of the grandparent node um, to be um, the child of the parent node. Um, we then actually rotate the nodes um, so that the parent node of the inserted node becomes um, the parent of both the grandparent and um, newly inserted node. And then we recolor. Um, so that's fairly complicated, but really what it's just doing is it's another way of ensuring that we have no two red nodes in a row, and we have an equal number of black nodes along each branch. Um, case three is actually very similar. So again, we have a black uncle node. Um, but you'll notice this time we have a triangle pattern, um, which means that so the two is the left child of the three, whereas the three is the right child of the one. Um, we could have the same thing on the other side of the tree. And what we do in this case is, again, a rotation, but it's slightly different. So again, we reassign the pointer, and we rotate it. But this time, the newly inserted node becomes the parent of both its parent and grandparent nodes, um, instead of the parent and grandparent rotating. And then after this, again, we recolor the nodes in order to ensure that we still have no two red nodes in a row and that an equal number of black nodes are in each path. Um, so those are the three main um, imbalance states and how they can be resolved. Um, it might be helpful to look at the code a bit more in detail. Um, but it's important to note in this implementation that I've included, once one imbalance is fixed at any node, as you recurse back up through the tree, it's possible that more imbalances have been created. Um, but the recursion actually tests for this at each black node. Um, so it essentially solves itself, so that's nice. Um, and once we get up to the top of the node, so where we've called this insert tree function that I've been showing in, on every slide um, would actually be inside some sort of wrapper function, um, which ensures that once we get up to the top of the tree, um, we recolor the head node black. Um, as I mentioned several slides ago, the head of the tree must always be black. Um, so some key takeaways from this, um, I don't expect anyone to memorize how to do any of the rotations, but red black trees and other self-balancing trees set an upper bound on the imbalance of a tree um, so that we can search more efficiently. Um, they ensure that both insertion and deletion, which I didn't show, is an O of log n rather than O of n operation, which a typical binary search tree would be in its worst case. And they rely on rebalancing when necessary through rotation or recoloring to avoid consecutive red nodes. I think it's also important to note at this point that uh, one of the advantages of a red-black tree is that we only, of the several rules of uh, red-black trees, we only have to look at the consecutive red nodes. We don't have to constantly be counting black nodes. Um, so that's a big advantage. Um, the slides will be available, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.